Today we're going to continue our conversation about the process of faith, looking at all that God has provided for us. We started looking at the situation with Thomas. The other disciples had been in the upper room. Jesus appeared to them. He breathed on them. They received the Holy Spirit, but Thomas was not with them. They came later when Thomas was present, told Thomas what they had experienced, what had happened, that Jesus had been risen. Thomas refused to believe. And we've seen that it was because he was focused outwardly on the things he had gone through. We also saw that in Jesus's compassion and mercy, he was not angry or upset with Thomas. He did not get frustrated with Thomas. He did not get upset that Thomas wanted to see something. Thomas was operating in his own level of faith based on what he had seen, what he had heard, what he had experienced. His focus and his attention was on the wrong thing. He had traveled with Jesus. He had heard Jesus prophesy that he was going to be crucified. He had heard Jesus prophesy that he was going to be put to death. He had heard Jesus prophesy that he was going to be he was going to raise from the dead after three days. I wonder what Thomas's reaction would have been if he had been focused on the prophecies of Jesus, on the word of God, instead of on what he had experienced, what he had seen. But Jesus in his grace and mercy did not get angry. He did not get upset. He did not get frustrated. He just said, Thomas, here are the wounds in my hand. Here's where the soldiers pierced me with the spear. And Thomas, because he saw and experienced Jesus, he believed and rejoiced. And that's the thing. We think everything has to be perfect in order for God to work for in our lives. God will meet us where we're at. Hebrews eleven six tells us without faith it is impossible to please God. We do not have to be perfect for God to love us because God loved us before we even knew him before we were saved, before we became a Christian. If you've never met God before, I want you to know that he is extending his hands with an offer of fellowship, of relationship with you. He desires to get to know you. To, he desires to bring you into his family, to adopt you, to be with you. In John chapter 3, I've quoted it a few times, but let's go back and look at it real quick. John chapter 3, in verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, his Son, should not perish, but have everlasting life. God so loved the world, God so loved you, that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus was the first begotten of many brethren. He loved you so much that he gave Jesus. Why? That you should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus, at a later point, tells us that this is eternal life, that you may know the Father. So what we could say would is being told to us here is that God so loved us that he gave Jesus to open the door for us to have fellowship, to have relationship with him. I've heard people say, well, it says it so we should not perish, but have everlasting life. So everlasting life must mean eternal, must mean living forever. Eternal life, everlasting life is not just living forever as a result of being saved, because the unsaved person is going to be live forever. Eternal life, Jesus said, is to know the Father, to have a relationship with the Father, to experience his presence on a day-by-day -day basis. God desires good things for you. He sent Jesus to serve as our sacrifice, to serve as our atoning sacrifice, to redeem us, to purchase us back from Satan. We were born into sin because of Adam's sin. When we accept Jesus, and it's just a simple process, of, you can say a prayer such as, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I invite you to be my Savior. 
I ask, I receive your forgiveness and I acknowledge that you are my Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Just a simple prayer like that is all it takes. We're told in Romans chapter 10, it's believing in our heart and confessing with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. We make it out to be some big process of, of going through this and this and this and this, this step, 10 steps to salvation, five steps to growing in faith, eight steps to being healing. We're the ones that bring people back into bondage of works. But everything that was provided to us in Christ is provided to us in the rest of faith. And that's what and Paul tells us, that we are to fight the good fight of faith. What is the good fight of faith? It's the fight to enter into his rest. We've talked about in the previous few videos the fact that he has given us his measure of faith in Romans chapter 12, 3. We saw that in, in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 16 that we are justified by the faith of the Son of God. He sent his word through a preacher, a minister, a Christian who ministered that to us, word to us. We heard that word. He imparted his measure of faith. We acted on his faith. We received Jesus. We became new creations in Christ Jesus. At that moment, the Holy Spirit immersed us, baptized us into the into Jesus, and, we, and he poured out his love into our heart. So now the love that we express to the world around us is not our love. The faith that we exercise is not our faith. The power that we exercise is not our power. Everything that we have, everything that we experience in life is because of Christ Jesus, not because of us. But what happens so many times, God so loved that he gave his only begotten son. Why? To draw us into relationship, to draw us into fellowship with him. We close out the last video looking at... 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 17, it says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the, Christ, the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. And that's what happens. People struggle in their relationship with God. They struggle to receive their healing. They struggle to receive their finances. They struggle to receive from God, not realizing that he has already provided everything to us. We need to develop in our understanding of who we are in Christ Jesus. We need to understand and develop in this relationship that God has called us into. For in Ephesians chapter 4, we've seen it in previous videos, we were created in righteousness and pure holiness. You are as righteous as you will be the day you enter into heaven. You are as holy as you will be the day you enter into heaven. But where we struggle is we get focused on self, and that is the enemy's goal. He brings trials, tribulations, he brings situations to get our focus off of Jesus and onto our situation, to get our focus off of Jesus and onto our symptoms, to get our focus off of Jesus and onto the doctor's report, just as he did with Thomas. Thomas, his attention had been moved off of Jesus's promises that he would be resurrected in three days. His focus was not on that. His focus on, was on what he saw, what he experienced, what he smelled, what he heard while he was at the crucifixion. And so he was unable to believe because his focus was in the wrong place. And that's where Paul tells us we walk by faith and not by sight. Why? Because the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen are eternal. How do you see things that are not seen? You see them by looking into the Word of God. And that's why Paul compares scripture to a mirror. We look into the mirror to see a reflection of ourselves in Christ Jesus. He gave me that picture, which I shared in the previous video, of a hamster running in one of those clear balls. Have you ever seen where they run across the floor and they bump into things, but they're always inside that ball. They always are contained inside that ball. We have been sealed into Christ Jesus with the Holy Spirit. So basically what happened when we received Jesus, when we prayed that prayer, invited him into our heart, when we believe in our heart, we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, the Holy Spirit immersed us in Christ and then sealed us into him with himself. So we are sealed. Ephesians 1 tells us we are sealed with the Holy Spirit in Christ Jesus. So we're just like that hamster walking through life, always encircled, encompassed by the Holy Spirit because we are sealed in Christ Jesus. Our relationship now is not based on ourselves. It's based on Jesus. It's based on the works of Jesus. 
when God deals with us, he deals with us based on what Jesus has accomplished, not on what we accomplish, because he knows our efforts will never be able to meet the demands of eternal justice. So he sent Jesus to be our high priest. And if he, in Hebrews chapter 9, it tells us that Jesus became the high priest of good things to come. But what, what happens is because we allow ourselves to have our focus turned off of Jesus and off of the cross and off of the redemptive work of Jesus and off of those good things that God has provided us through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, which we see in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, he's given us everything that we would ever need for life and godliness before we were ever born. He loved you so much that he planned out your entire life. He set aside the provision for every step of that plan. And now it is up to you just to get into scripture, to develop that relationship with the Holy Spirit and allow you, the Holy Spirit to lead you day by day through life. He desires to show his goodness to you. He desires to express his goodness. And that's why in Hebrews 9, we see that he is the high priest of good things to come. Those good things were set aside before you took your first breath for every moment of your life. But as long as we focus on ourself, as on our situation, on what people are doing to us, on what they said about us, on our symptoms, on what the doctor said, on what our bank account statement says, as long as our focus is there, we are essentially doing exactly what Paul says here in 1 Corinthians 1.17. We are making the cross of Christ of none effect in our lives because we've been drawn away from the cross. We've been drawn away from the work of Christ. We've been drawn away from his completed work, that eternal redemption that he has provided for us. And we've been drawn to ourselves because Satan knows as long as he can keep our eyes off of Christ in the work that Jesus has accomplished, that we will never be able to experience the goodness that God has set aside for us. He has provided for everything that we will ever need in life. It says Jesus is the high priest of good things to come because God has already been in our future. And in our future, he has set aside the good things that we will need for us to enjoy all of his provision for every day of our life. And as long as we keep our focus on Jesus, we will see ourselves walking out into victory. As I said in the previous videos, a lot of times we get tripped up because we're so focused on ourselves. We're seeing our mistakes. We're seeing our situations. We're seeing how we failed, how we did this, how we did that. You hear people talk about that. I just am not good enough. I am not praying enough. I'm not reading enough scripture. I'm not doing this. I committed to doing this, but then I didn't do it. I, 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 as long as your focus is on I, your focus is not on he. We are complete in Christ Jesus. We are righteous. We are holy. But our focus needs to get off of ourselves and onto him. In his presence, self cannot live. And that's the thing is, we will not always get everything right. We will make mistakes. But he recognizes that. That's why he sealed us into Christ Jesus. We take the word in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. It tells us we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. Every day we plant the word, we meditate on it, we give it careful and considerate thought. There will, at the beginning, as we are training our soul, as we are learning to think like him, to act like him, to grow into our the knowledge of who we are in Christ Jesus, we will make more mistakes. We will get off the path more often, but the Holy Spirit will always be faithful and, and faithfully to lead us right back onto the path. But you will find and I just encourage you to keep pressing in, keep moving in. Don't allow the enemy to convict you, to condemn you. As Paul said in Romans chapter 8 and verse 1, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Don't allow him to beat you up over the over your failures. Just when he comes to you and remind, and tells you, well, did you say, did you confess enough scriptures today? Did you pray enough? Did you, did you, did you, did you? Just remind him of what Christ has completed. Remind him that you have been adopted into the family of God. Remind him that you are complete in Christ Jesus. Remind him that you have been made righteous, that you have been made holy. Remind him that he has been put under the feet of Jesus, that Jesus arose and spoiled him. I like to do that when he comes and starts making these accusations against me. I like to remind him that Jesus spoiled him and made a show of him openly, as it tells us in Colossians. When you spoil someone, 
that comes from an, uh, you know in an old concept in medieval times they would take a king when they would defeat him back in, in the roman era they would take a king that they defeated they would cut off his thumbs they would cut off his toes to ensure that he could no longer lead his armies and then they would strip him naked and they would just lead him through town making a show of him openly in the bible it tells us in colossians that jesus made a show of the enemy and rendered him powerless he made a show of him openly i like to remind him of these things but our part is to get into the word of god to allow the word of god to get into us and it will begin to transform us you will start seeing yourself making less and less mistakes you'll start seeing yourself miss it less and less we are not trying to give up habits or anything else because we have to to earn god's love we're not trying to earn his acceptance or his behavior because god loves us he loved us before we received him we, he loves us when we make mistakes our relationship with him is not based on whether we get everything right or not and that's where we saw in a previous video i mentioned how the law was given as a tutor to lead us to christ in galatians chapter 4 verse 4 it tells us but when the fullness of the time was come god sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law jesus came under the old covenant when we look at his ministry he ministered as a man anointed by the spirit of god he ministered under the power of the spirit as an example of what we can do but notice what it says he was born under the law for the purpose of redeeming them that were under the law that we might receive the adoptions of sons which is exactly what he tells us in ephesians chapter 1 we have been adopted by god that's why the bible tells us that jesus was the firstborn of many brethren there's a second born there's a third born there's a fourth born you may be the 100 millionth born we are all born into the family of god with equal standing equal rights as jesus so it says the purpose that jesus was sent to the, it, and that's where we saw in, in John chapter 3 God so loved that he gave Jesus why to redeem us that we might receive the adoptions of sons and because we are now sons he sent forth the spirit of his son into our heart crying Abba father he sent forth his spirit Jesus told the disciples in John 16 that it was expedient profitable for them that he leave so that the Holy Spirit would come Jesus did ascend back to the Father's right hand. Ephesians tells us that he is seated at the Father's right hand in heavenly places. We are sealed in him. We are seated in him at the Father's right hand. The Holy Spirit has come to reveal that to us, to reveal our position before the Father. And in that position, we are always accepted. We are never rejected. We are always drawn to the Father's bo bosom. And that's that was the whole purpose of our redemption. That's where I've said before, I believe that the purpose of the cross was not necessarily to redeem us, not necessarily to obtain forgiveness, not necessarily to obtain healing. All of those things were provided, but the purpose of the cross was that we might be positioned to receive adoption by God. In a previous video a couple of months ago, I shared the Lord had given me an open vision as I was sharing uh, out of Ephesians chapter 1 that we have been adopted into the family of God. And I saw this angel sitting with a stack of adoption certificates. And as people were receiving, praying that prayer of salvation, accepting Jesus to become saved, you could see him stamping those certificates and filing them. Stamping, filing, stamping, filing as people received Jesus. I asked the Holy Spirit what that meant. And he said those, then he showed me even closer. Each one of those certificates were certificates of adoption as people invited Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. He was stamping them to complete the adoption. But the thing that was interesting is in Ephesians, it says we were foreordained to receive the forgiveness of sins. Those certificates were not filled out at the moment the person received Jesus as Lord and Savior. Those certificates were not filled out the moment you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. They were filled out before, with your name on it, before God said, light be in Genesis. From the very foundation of the world, you were foreordained to receive forgiveness of sins. From the very foundation of the world, you were foreordained to be adopted into his family. And those certificates of adoption were, were filled out and created 
even before man fell into sin, even before Jesus went to the cross, there was a certificate in heaven with your name on it, ready for you to receive Jesus. And when you receive Jesus, that angel stamped that certificate and the adoption was completed. You are in the family of God. Yes, we all make mistakes. And yes, God does sometimes correct us and lead us back onto the right path. But he is always faithful and just and you will always find him waiting with arms wide open to receive you, to accept you into his presence. You will never be rejected because of the blood of Jesus. He loves you. He desires only good things for you. And we just desire so much to see his goodness manifested in your life. As we come to the end of this video, I want to remind you, God loves you. God desires only good things for you. Jesus is your high priest to good things to come. He desires to pour out his goodness, but it begins with you opening the word and allowing the word to wash over you, to transform you, to paint a picture within you of who you are in Christ Jesus. And the more you focus on that, the more you focus on your position in him, the more you will see his goodness manifested in your life. Thank you so much for joining me today. If these videos are a blessing to you, please share them with your friends and family. Let them know what God is doing in your life. Become a witness of his goodness. Subscribe to the channel. Click the bell so you will always be notified when we release a new video. And again, please share them with your friends and family. Know that Carolyn, I love you. We pray for you continuously.